within the spiral and dispound systems, there are layouts. Layouts are going to be your pages that are on the inside of the planner. So I'm going to move this guy off to the side for a second. Okay. So let's talk layouts. All right. I'm going to grab this guy right here. So this is one of my newer planners, but I'm really glad that I have it actually because it's going to allow me to show you guys a certain kind of layout that I wouldn't have been able to show you before. So that's why I'm using it first. So layout is what the inside of your pages look like. So most planners are going to have in all, all forms. Okay, they're going to have like a title page that is going to be where you would put your name in case somebody finds your planner or something like that. So they're going to have this. Most planners are also going to have a year on a page or two years on two pages like what this one has just to give you an overall calendar reference. Now, most planners will also have like a sheet that has all like dates and holidays or reference pages and things like that, like sizes or weights or, you know, things of that nature. Now, the Happy Planner and Planners do not have that page. I think they have at one point in time, but they do not anymore. Okay, so most planners are going to have a monthly spread where there's a regular monthly calendar, and then they're going to have your weekly weekly view where you can put you know write down all the things that you need to do now a lot of planners a lot of spiral bound planners like the uh, blue sky planners day spring planners things like that those brands they have a very traditional horizontal layout i used to use a horizontal layout almost exclusively all the time because that was primarily what was available in the planner world was a layout that looked like this. So this probably looks very familiar. This is what we call a horizontal layout. Now, as the planner community has evolved and changed, more layouts have come out in the world. So now we're gonna use this guy right here. This one has what we call a vertical layout. So you have your monthly, but then the days are done vertically like this. So this is a vertical layout. It's separated into like three boxes. And when I was first learning how to use this, I was like, okay, I don't, I've never had anything like that. I don't know how to do that. Do I separate it into sections? Like, how do you do this? My planning inside of my planner has evolved and changed over time from using a vertical layout. So at this point, like I had my work schedule at the top and like extra things down here at the bottom. And you'll see that it just kind of continues that way or it has, you know, a lot of writing and journaling or sometimes not a lot. So don't worry about stickers right now. That's some that we're going to get into that in another video. So don't worry about any of that. But this is what we call a vertical layout. Now, the last layout I don't actually have here at home. So I'll put a picture here. But basically, it's going to be a version of vertical. It goes like this. But it's hourly and it's got the times on the side so that you can actually schedule out your day. Hourly planners are really good for people who have a lot of meetings hairstylists, uh, people, basically people who have to do things, you know, at certain times of the day and not just more general. So if you really need an hourly layout, they do make hourly layouts in Happy Planner as well and in Erin Condren. So there are hourly layouts. Those are going to be your th main three layouts. Now, in the Happy Planner, they have a lot of different kinds of layouts that they have started coming out with recently. And I thought I would take a minute and show you guys a couple of those because those might intrigue you a little bit. So in Happy Planner, they have a layout called the monthly layout. This is for people who don't need those weekly pages. So you have your monthly spread 
And then you have a spread that looks like this. This is like a general for your entire month. Top priorities for the month, things you want to check off, maybe some habits that you want to track and just kind of general like notes and just things for your entire month. Nothing that has to be done on a specific day, but just an overview of the month. And then they have these daily task pages where you definitely can split it up by day. They have enough for 31 days of tasks if you wanna use them that way. So that is one that is called the monthly layout. I like it to use it for a specific aspect of my life. Now, I don't use it for everything. This is not my planner that I use for everything that I do in my life at all. This is for a specific aspect of my life. All right, and then there is a layout called Color Block. Color Block is my favorite layout. It's actually just a twist on the vertical layout. So you'll notice that it's a vertical like this, but it's color blocked like this. Now you could use that for different sections of things every day, like each little block is for different things. I just really love this particular layout. I make it more vertical, but for some reason, because it's not the three specific sections, I have a much easier time in decorating it and planning inside of this, this color block layout. Why? I don't know, but I do. So color block is another one. Now there's one other really big layout in the happy planner world that a lot of people use and love, and that is called a dashboard layout. I'm gonna show you guys that here in this small planner. So this is a small planner, so or a mini planner, if you will. So a dashboard layout looks like this. A lot of people love this. They also have it on that other size I was showing you. You have a section for the week that's your dashboard. And they have pre-populated titles, but of course you don't have to use those. You can always change those out. Calls and emails, errands you need to run, things you need to buy this week, bills you need to pay, things you're focusing on for the week. You could have a work schedule here. You could have a meal plan schedule there because it has Monday through Sunday. And then you have your days in these small boxes like this. This works really great for some people that don't have maybe as much to write down or they don't need as much space and they want to work in these just smaller chunks. Dashboard layout has become very, very popular in the happy planner world. Now, I do not believe Erin Condren has color block or the monthly or the uh, dashboard layout, but I will double check before I post this and maybe put something on the screen here if I'm wrong. So your horizontal and your vertical and your hourly are going to be your prime. Okay, so how do you pick a layout that's perfect for you? Honestly, it's trial and error. Choose one and then try it out, see if it works. If you think it's working for you, awesome. If, you, if you're just not sure, then you can always try another one. And one thing I do wanna say is don't feel bad if you don't finish a planner and you transition to a different kind of planner because you wanna try it. There's nothing wrong with that. Finding something that really works for you to help you be more productive and to feel like this is actually assisting you in your life is what's most important. Um, so this was me trying out the vertical layout, uh, you know, continuing to use it, seeing how I liked it as far as it being, you know, vertical and, you know, if I, I liked planning in that manner. And what you're gonna start to notice is that I started to use it less and less, not because of its uh, vertical layout, but because this was a really hard year for me. And so when I say don't feel bad that you didn't finish a planner, that's honestly, that is what I mean. There are months in here where I don't think I did anything in this planner, but that's okay. I'm trying to see where that was. I don't know where it was. 
he was in July. Yeah, July. July didn't get used at all. Well, it did there, but like there are points where it didn't get used like at all. So don't feel bad. So I switched from vertical into color block. When was that? Maybe a year ago, which is that color block layout with those blocks that I was showing you. So as far as like what layout works for you, you're just going to have to try them. The horizontal one I showed you, I am going to start trying to use. Like I said, I haven't used a horizontal in years, so it's definitely going to be a journey and be interesting to see if that works for me as far as it being horizontal. Now, let's talk planner sizes. That's the last part of this particular video. Planners come in different sizes. In the Happy Planner, this is considered the classic size planner. This is my hand, okay? And like this is a traditional spiral notebook size. And you'll notice that it is a little bit smaller. Okay, so uh, not as big as a spiral notebook, but they typically, I think they are, the classic size is like seven inches by nine inches or so. And that's about the same for Erin Condren planners. They're roughly the same size. Happy planners are a smidge bigger than an Erin Condren, but this is your classic size. And then um, in classic sizes, as far as discs go, for the binding in a Happy Planner, are going to be this size. So this is the palm of my hand. I would say about the size of a quarter or a little bit bigger than a quarter would be the size of this right here. Okay, and then you have the big happy planners or big ones. Now, I don't know if Erin Condren has big. Uh, I'm not sure if they do the big size. I remember this may not fall fit on the screen, actually, now that I think about it. There we go. <laughs> this is a big, this would be a typical inside of here, an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper would fit. The dimensions on this are usually around 10 inches by 11 inches. So it's just that it's a bigger, you know, like that's my hand in the middle of it. It's just a bigger overall planner uh, than the regular classic size. The classic size planner fits on top of the big like this, okay? Now, the last kind, I've already seen it, is the mini planner. So you can see this in comparison to the big here. All right, so let's move that out of the way. My mom uses a big planner or she used to, uh, I do not use a big planner anymore. The only big planners I have have been my teacher planners. They've been big like that. So the mini planners typically are about five inches by eight inches. So here's my hand on top of that. This is a size that I can stick in my purse really easy, which is why I have a mini planner because it can go with me wherever I go. So you have the mini happy planner discs because they're going to be smaller. They're like this. Now, big happy planners still come on the classic size discs like this. So just be, there's just more discs. Uh, there are seven on the mini, there's nine on the classic and 11 on the big ones just to hold the size of paper. Now, one thing that is really nice about no, I'm not gonna go there yet. Yeah, I will. One thing that's really nice about the disc bound planners is that you can expand them to carry more papers. They do have what we call an expander disc, which is gonna be this one right here. Uh, and that's not for planners, like the size of a planner, it's for the width of the planner and how much paper you're carrying on there. So this wouldn't necessarily apply to a spiral bound planner because you're gonna have that coil 
Now, the more paper you have in a spiral bound planner, the larger that coil will need to be. And if you're ordering from Erin Condren, they customize it for you. So you don't have to worry about that. That's just going to come on your planner automatically. So if you're not choosing disc bound, you don't have to worry about that. All right. So now, have you chosen your planner? Probably not. Now you're gonna do some research. So right here on the screen, I'm gonna put those big brands, okay? And you can screenshot this if you want to or whatever works for you and do some research and figure out what you think is gonna be best for you. Overall, I use Happy Planner. It's more affordable and it's more customizable and we're gonna get into that in the next video. What is planner customization? All right, you guys stay tuned for part three of Planner 101, the basics coming at you here very soon. Bye.